love the channel and find it useful in becoming a happy retiree. Subscribe today. We're going to go to Mike, who joins us from the great state of Decatur. Mike, good morning. How can we help? Hey, uh, I am. Um, I work for a large company, and I traditionally have been putting about 10% of my salary into uh, their 401k plan. It gets a 6% match, and I recently received some advice that I should be moving a little bit more of my money into the employee stock plan. Uh, my employer has a stock purchase plan. And so um, I was wondering if I should scale back my 401k down to the 6%, which is the maximum match for my employer, and just move that extra money, the 4%, into the employee stock purchase plan. Do you think that's a better idea? Okay, so a couple of thoughts here. First of all, everyone out there is thinking, hey, what company is it? And part of it has to do with, are you in a company that you believe in the long-term equity value of, of the stock? And it sounds like you do. So it's whether it's Home Depot or Coca-Cola or uh, Georgia Pacific, you are looking at y y whatever the company is, you believe in the stock long-term. Is that a correct assumption? Uh, yes, I would, uh, I would believe so. And do you have a discount in buying, the sh in buying shares? Uh, I... They pay for all the uh, maintenance, and there's no fees as far as purchasing the the the, uh, the shares, and it just automatically gets payroll deducted. Well, mo a lot of employee stock purchase programs, you're able to do that at a at a discount, at a ten or fifteen percent discount, typically, and and that's why I'm I'm a huge fan of those. If you can get a fifteen percent discount, even if the stock's bad, uh, it's not ne it, it works out in your favor, but the answer here is that the, the big difference between deferring money into your 401k, Mike, and doing these employee stock purchase plans, which are separate outside of a 401k or retirement plan, the biggest difference is a tax difference. So are you married? Do, does your wife work? I, uh, I am married. My wife is a full-time student right now. Okay, so you guys are in, not in a giant tax bracket, correct? What, uh, uh, what, well, what, what's your I, I, what's your uh, income this year? What, what just approximate round number for the family? About one thirty a year. One thirty for the year. I mean, my thought here is that you're in a you're in a tough tax bracket, and you get a lot of help by deferring money into that four hundred one k because it all goes in it it comes off the top line on your taxes. So it redu if you put ten grand in. You go from effectively having 130,000 in income to pay on. For, now you have 120. So there's a real advantage beyond just the match. So I would be reluctant to stop doing or re reduce that 401k because you get such a giant tax benefit that you don't necessarily see as much. But I would not reduce my 401k just to do employee stock. the the The, the best answer here is for you to do both. And I want to talk it. So I would I would not reduce the 401k and see if you can squeeze a few extra percentage points out of your gross paycheck to do also do the ESPP or the employee stock. And we're going to talk about something I call TSL, Taxes Savings Life, as some big round percentages when it comes to budgeting that could be helpful too. I go and I think about this generalized budgeting strategy that I've used for a lot of years it's called TSL, Taxes Savings Life. And the, and the math here is pretty simple. You take your gross income, and you t and you and you expect that thirty percent goes to taxes and twenty percent goes to savings, and that's half the money. And then the other fifty percent goes to life. So taxes save TSL is taxes savings life thirty twenty fifty. I take my gross income and I expect thirty percent to go to the government stay out of trouble, 20% goes to savings so that at some point you'll be able to retire early and stop working or have the choice to do that, and then life another 50%. Now, when you're starting out, and if you're a millennial listening, you're saying, Wes, you're kind of crazy. I need more than just 50% of my gross paycheck to live, and I get that. So the TSL matrix or framework is really, you want that to be an average over your working career. So it might not be 20% savings right away, and that's okay, but you want to ha ramp up to that 20% as soon as you possibly can. Hi, I'm Wes Moss, and thanks for taking a minute to hear about what's so different about my new book, You Can Retire Sooner Than You Think. So unlike other retirement books, this book will give you a step-by-step -step guide 
whether in your 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s, to learn from what these successful and happy retirees did to get there. I hope you enjoy the book, but more importantly, I know that it'll help you retire sooner than you think.